Good morning. This is Professor Roger Lewis Martinez Davila, and welcome back to Deciphering Secrets Burgos. Today we have the opportunity to visit with Director Virena from the Casa Arabe. It's a great opportunity for us to showcase how Spain is engaging in the multicultural and interreligious world and intercultural world where Jews, Christians, Muslims, and folks of all different types are really interested in promoting uh, cross-cultural communication. Uh, along with other uh, institutions we're highlighting, this chance to visit with the director is very special because we can get a sense of what the institution is, what they're doing, and where they're headed. So thank you very much, director. I really appreciate your time today. You're most welcome. Well, at first I just kind of wanted to start off with, because I think it's the most important part uh, of all of our work, is how we're um, personally connected to our work. How did you find yourself uh, coming to Casa Arabe? What is your background, and, and why do you work in this field of kind of cultural diplomacy? Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, the way I came to Casa Arabe has to do with my pri uh, previous uh, post. I was uh, Spanish ambassador to Iran, and the uh, previous director of Casa Arabe is the present ambassador in Iran. So we just uh, swapped the, the posts. Uh, he, uh, I, I was in Iran till um, September last year, and in spring last year, he, uh, he made me this offer, and I, I couldn't refuse. So that's the way I came here. I see, I see. And your personal background and your educational background, or mm -hmm. um, where are you originally from in Spain? I am from uh, Valencia, which is a city on the uh, east uh, coast uh, from um, Spain, um, and um, I became a, a diplomat at the, uh, at the beginning of the uh, 80s, mm -hmm. because I wanted to live abroad, that was my main mm -hmm. um, intention, and then uh, in the majority of my professional career, I didn't have uh, anything to do with... Uh, Arabian world, or um, mm -hmm. my the second post I had was Pakistan, which which is not of course Arabic, but it's it's Muslim, and then after uh, after about fifteen years of my career, I landed in Algeria in two thousand and six. You've been in amazing places, and I and and really, uh, I think this kind of showcases in the most important way. Um, how seriously the Spanish government takes and, and the city of Madrid takes mm -hmm. these international relations. For someone with your expertise and, and experience to, to place you in the post uh, inside of here in Madrid to focus on these cultural affairs, I think it speaks volumes to really? how important the government takes this, uh, this initiative of Casa Arabe. Well, uh, the, the, the point is from the uh, foreign policy uh, perspective uh, from Spain, the Arab world had always had, uh, always is of course not correct, but since uh, many years, a very important uh, place in the Spanish foreign policy. This has historical reasons uh, because of the uh, Al-Andalus uh, many centuries in which Spain was part of, of this world. So this has to do as well because of our uh, geograph geographical position mm -hmm. and our cultural proximity to uh, North Africa, especially in the two main divisions of the uh, Arab world, the Maghreb and Masrek, we are of course more concerned about Maghreb, about West Arab world. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I would like to point out that we have only 14 kilometers between Spain and Morocco, and that the uh, the closest capital to Madrid, uh, besides Lisbon, is uh, Al Algier. So uh, there are many reasons why we are um, very much interested and engaged mm -hmm. in uh, Arab world, and um, especially this institution, which existed since 10 years, was uh, formed and was created during the uh, government of um, President of Government Tabadero, mm -hmm. and a very special minister uh, of foreign affairs, Mr. Moradinos, mm -hmm. who had a very uh, special and very important relation with the Arab world. He was the figure behind this institution. He was the one who pushed the uh, creation of Casa Arabe, mm -hmm. and I think it's uh, this is the consequence of his political vision and uh, how mm -hmm. important the Arab world should be for Spanish foreign mm -hmm. policy. So I should ask you just uh, how did you find yourself kind of engaged with this Islamic history? I mean, I'm personally a, 
uh, you know, uh, a Hispanic <coughs> descendant from the United States, like most uh, most Hispanics or uh, or Mexican Americans, uh, we acknowledge these like this long lineage of cultural connection to Spain, but also the other religions uh -huh. and cultures from inside of it. But yourself being Valenci from Valencia, uh, whether it was when you were growing up or uh, in your as an adult, were there particular things that intrigued you about your own Spanish uh, Islamic history? Uh, well, uh, my the part of uh, Val of Spain where I come from is the the part of Spain in which the uh, what we call moros or moriscos remain the longest mm -hmm. because uh, in theory they were expelled in 1492. Uh, but many of them remained for uh, some some years, mm -hmm. and they were expelled subsequently in the, uh, in the 15th Habsburg uh, uh, yeah. uh, period. And I am from a region in which these uh, people remained the longest. Mm -hmm. uh, my father and my mother they were from um, Valencia and Murcia, mm -hmm. the interior part of these provinces, uh, which are agricultural uh, mm -hmm. towns. And this was everything. Uh, the uh, the presence of the Islamic and Ar Arabic world was very big, even in these uh, years. Absolutely. And then, um, as I said, I, of course, I knew about the, uh, because I had many uh, proofs of this, of the uh, history of Spain and the connection with Islamic and Arabic worlds. But I have to say, in Spain, this is a bit ambiguous, because sure. on the one side, because of the national history, the, uh, the uh, mantra is, we are not uh, yes. Muslims, we are not Arabs, we just... We're re Spanish. We conquered our territory yes. after... And then, in, in a way, there was, and there is still kind of not so much showing this uh, heritage and this connection. On the other side, after um, traveling in, in many uh, countries in the world, it was clear to me what a proximity exists yes. between Spanish whichever way you want to look at it, an Islamic or uh, Arabic sure. uh, world. So the, the quantity of words that we have from Arabic language, the mentality, there are so many connections. So Absolutely. I, I think, now is as well a political uh, subject in Spain, I think that part of our uh, national identity has a lot to do with this, with uh, this past, with this heritage, with Mediterranean affairs, and. Of course, Arab and uh, Muslim is a big part of it. Well, and it's really, I, I think this is why, uh, even though I started my career in the political world mm -hmm. before becoming a, uh, an academic, um, this is why I think I've always been so fascinated by, by my own Spanish history, mm -hmm. the shared history, is because um, one of the original places where we really started to work through intercultural issues in this world is Spain, <coughs> the Iberian Peninsula. And many of us look now, I think, to the United States, or we see France, or we see Germany now kind of engaging with this large Im immigrant populations. But I think we often forget the place that Spain had in its history of 800 years of uh, cultural interrelations. And even again today, even, you know, we're confronting the most difficult elements of day-to-day -day living and affairs. And to take on that challenge, I think, is is an important one and something that should be acknowledged about mm -hmm. the Spanish people, the good that they're doing. Well, I think these are uh, two, two aspects on this question. The first is, up to the beginning of the 90s, mm -hmm. we didn't have any immigration mm -hmm. uh, because of economic reasons. Uh, nobody wanted to come to Spain to, to get a job because there was not so, yes. so many of them. But uh, since that time, we have, in a very short time, uh, quite a big amount of uh, foreigners coming to Spain. Yes. Uh, the, the biggest uh, group of these foreigners are Moroccans. Yes. Uh, these are around 800,000 or mm -hmm. 900,000. It depends because many of them, they are already nationalized, so you cannot. So, um, on the one side, we, the anomaly of not having Muslim population in Spain was changed because mm -hmm. of this new current of emigration. And then, of course, we put into contact these two uh, sides, the presence of the Moroccan, and in less quantity, Algerians and Tunisians, and the, the, the Spanish past. Yes. So um, that this, um, putting these two things together, they, they made Spain, uh, they gave Spain a special position, because if you ask us, well, many Arabs, or even Muslims, about Spain, 
and Andalus is still something in No, it, it, it in occupies Germany. our imagination. Yeah. And then we, we believe that in not along all these 700 years of presence, but in, 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 in many decades, Cordoba, as the uh, capital of the caliphate, was, a, was a, an example, was a symbol of what we call convivencia in Spanish, which means that the people were not living together without uh, a lot of problems, but they were working together. They were uh, involved in the political life, in the cultural life, and that this can be um, a good reference. Of course, it's not an example. The, sure. the situations are very different, but it could be a good reference to think about today on those terms and remembering which were the elements of this, mm -hmm. of this time, in, especially in Cordoba. Absolutely. Well, and I